let us solve a couple of exercises to recap what we have done. In each of the following sentences, supply a verb in agreement with its subject. Choose the correct one from the bracket. So, two and two, two and two, these are two singular, uh, you know, uh, subject. Uh, these are two singular nouns, but these are always taken as a whole. So, two and two make four. There are several mistakes in your essay. Either the teacher or the boys. So, the noun which is closest to the verb is plural. Since it is plural, therefore, my verb will be plural. Mr. Gupta and his parents. And is used to join two nouns. Therefore, this is plural. So, live in this house. Neither you nor I. Again, what is the subject or what is the noun closest to the verb? I. And with I, we use am. Either Madhu. Or her friends. Again, her friends is the noun which is closest to the verb. It is plural in nature and therefore my ver uh, verb will also be plural in nature. That is have. Alright. Neither coffee nor tea. Tea is singular, closest to the verb. Therefore, verb is singular. Slow and steady, this slow and steady is, uh, you know, one idea only. Therefore, slow and steady wins the race. More than 60 members, the entire subject. More than 60 members, plural, are expected at the party. A number of questions, again, a number of questions, plural, were asked of me. Alright. The next rule says, the following verbs, uh, the, uh, the following words that you can see in this box will always have a singular verb next to them. For example, everyone was shouting. So, everyone and was which is singular. No one has done the work. Again, no one and has. One of you is appropriately suitable for this job. So, one and is. Someone is waiting at the door. Somebody has taken my pen. Or many a plant or many a criteria has been fulfilled. So these are all the examples which are there in your book. Everyone knows, singular, no one wants, someone has and so on and so forth. The next rule says that if there are two nouns which are qualified or which have each or every, even though connected by and, will take a singular verb only. Now, what does that mean? We've learnt in the previous rules that if there are two nouns which are connected with the subject and they will always have a plural uh, verb that will be used right but this rule says that if in a sentence even though the subjects are connected with and they have the word each and every used before them they will always take a singular verb each and every girl is dancing very well. Each and every bo uh, boy has completed the work. Each officer and every clerk 
has achieved something in life. Each school and every teacher has a lot to boast about post the COVID scenario. So when there are two subjects, when there are two nouns which are joined together with the help of the word, with the help of the conjunction and, but they have each and every which is used before them, we will use uh, a singular verb with it. Okay. None. If you have... The word none which is used in the sentence. The verb that is to be used can vary on the type of the sentence itself. For example, did you buy any apples? Now apples is used over here, right? So when I use none, these apples will represent a plural verb. We'll use a plural verb along with them. Have you brought me a book? Now here my noun is a book which is singular. There was none in the bookshop. So depending on the noun for which I am using the word none, the verb is going to vary. If I say did you buy me red pens? My noun is red pens which is plural. So I will say there were none in the market. Similarly, if I say Have you got me a jacket? I will say there was none in the shop. And full stop. So whatever is the noun for which you are using none, the verb will be used accordingly. If the noun is plural, the verb will be plural. If the noun is singular, the verb will be singular in nature. The next rule, uh, okay, you've got some more examples which are given in your book. When the singular or the plural, you know, express the sense equally well, the plural is used. What does this mean? Let us look at the example. None but fools have believed it. None but fools. None over here represents something singular. But fools over here represents something plural. Right? None is singular, fools is plural. But what is more prominent in the sentence? Plural. And therefore I have used a plural verb in the sentence. None of these words are now current. None of these words. Again, a plural noun which is used. Therefore, are. None of his poems are well known. Poems is again plural and we use the plural verb are with it. Okay. So, this is how we are going to decide what verb to use when the word none is used in the sentence. The next rule says that the words which are given below will always use a plural verb with them. We did a list of words which will always use a singular verb. Each, either, many, uh, somebody, anybody, everybody and so on and so forth. Similarly, we have a few words which will always use the plural verbs. Both, few, a few, many, several and so on and so forth. Both the friends have eaten the chocolate. Few children have completed their work. 
a few boys have brought the ball several children have uh, brought sandwiches to school and so on and so forth right so with these words we always use a plural verb in the sentence some examples given in the book are both of these guests have come late okay many were called but few were chosen a few of these houses are still vacant several girls were absent so with these words we always use a plural verb the next rule says words such as much and a little will always take a singular verb much has been said or much has been done a little work has been completed a little water is there in the jar okay so with much and a little we use singular verbs then words such as most all none some of these words take singular verb and some of these words take plural verb now when do they take singular and when do they take a plural verb if these three words are talking about an uncountable noun we all know a noun can either be counted or cannot be counted so when these three words are used to talk about an uncountable noun they will take a singular verb for example any food right all has been eaten food is an uncountable noun i cannot count food since i am using all for an uncountable noun therefore the verb will be singular which is has similarly 60 boys took the examination all have passed here i am talking about boys which is countable right since boys is countable therefore my verb is plural in nature there what have we understood thus if in a sentence i am using all most or none to talk about an uncountable noun the verb will be singular in nature and if i am using these three words to talk about a countable noun the verb will be plural in nature let us look at more examples most of the money money again is uncountable right the word money in itself is uncountable in nature therefore singular verb has has been used most of the boys boys is countable therefore i have used the plural verb have next rule says collective noun will take a singular verb when the collection is a whole okay so when the collective noun talks about something as a whole it will take a singular verb and it will take a plural verb when the individual members of the group are thought of or are segregated for example the crew was large so in the first sentence when i say the crew was large here i talk about the whole crew of people and when i say the crew were taken prisoners that means each and every person of the crew was uh, taken to the jail similarly the committee has issued its report so the committee on a whole has issued a report 
द कमिटी आर डिवाइडेड इन देयर ओपिनियन दैट मीन्स ईच एंड एवरी पर्सन ऑफ द कमिटी हैज अ डिफरेंट ओपिनियन सो इफ द कलेक्टिव नाउन टॉक्स अबाउट समथिंग एज अ होल इट विल यूज अ सिंगुलर वर्ब and when the collective noun talks about individual members then it will take a plural verb right this is what i have already explained to you that when i say the committee had different opinions so here the committee had uh, was talking about each and every member of the committee who were divided in their opinions right the next rule says a phrase which is the name of a book or it is an organization or it is a country it will always take a singular verb even if it has a singular it has a plural noun in it if what we are talking about is a proper name of the book proper name of the organization proper name of the country in a phrase then it will always take a singular verb irrespective of the fact that it has a plural uh, noun in it for example the arabian nights nights is plural but the arabian nights in totality is a name of a book therefore is gulliver's travels again travels plural but it is the name of a book so was the united states states is plural but united states in totality is a name of a country so has the next rule if in a phrase we are talking about some amount some quantity period of time unit of distance which is taken in totality we are going to use singular verb with it for example three parts of the book or the work sorry three parts of the work it is although written three parts which is plural but this again talks about a quantity has been finished Fifty thousand rupees. Again, rupees is plural, but since fifty thousand rupees talks about an amount, therefore it will have a singular verb. Six miles. Miles is plural, but six miles talk about a unit of distance. Therefore, it is singular in nature. however if the amount the quantity the period of time is considered as a number of some separate unit in that case the subject takes the plural verb what does this mean 6 kilometers of this road okay so 6 kilometers of this road now here we are talking about 6 kilometers on one road so plural is what we count off uh, you know the kilometers the distance is counted as plural because we are counting 6 kilometers on the road therefore need 50 gold coins were found in the old woman's box 50 gold coins were found where in the old woman's box so we can count the number of coins that were found in the woman's box and therefore were the last 3 years have been a hard time for me again when i say the last 3 years i am individually talking about each and every year and therefore plural 3 years are plural and i take a plural verb along with that the next rule says there are some nouns which are plural which seem to be plural but the meaning of these nouns is singular in nature and therefore they will take a singular verb for example news although it has an s to the end of it but it is singular in nature and will have is at the end of it 
politics is again something which has an s to the end of it but is representing one term therefore was mathematics again has an s at the end but it is just one word one stream of subject therefore is so those nouns which seem to be plural but are actually singular in nature will have a singular verb there are some nouns which are singular in form but the meaning is plural and these are going to take plural verb 12 dozen they seem to be singular but dozen has 12 right cost 100 rupees here dozen seems to be a singular unit but it is plural in nature and therefore rather than using costs we used cost next rule says pains and means can take singular or plural verb but construction of the sentence has to be consistent what does that mean i can say great pains has or have been inflicted on him both are fine the means employed by you is correct is unfair are unfair are correct both are okay all possible means have been employed or has been employed both are okay depending on the sentence now when the subject of the verb is relative pronoun we all have learned what are relative pronouns so if the subject of the verb the subject uh, the verb is looking to a subject always in order to decide what form to take whether to be singular or plural so if that subject is a relative pronoun it is a verb then it must be made in such a manner that it agrees with the antecedent of the relative pronoun what do i understand by antecedent antecedent means the noun which is used to represent that relative pronoun if i say the girl who was crying has left the town my relative pronoun is who and what is the antecedent the girl the noun which is being represented by that relative pronoun is the antecedent and my verb has to agree with the antecedent if i say the children who were playing are sitting nicely now what is my relative pronoun who what is the antecedent the children so my verb will agree with the antecedent that is the children which is plural let us look at some more examples given in your book if we say for example i who am your friend will help you with all my might so who is the relative pronoun which is used for the subject i which is singular and we know that with i we always use am therefore i have used am over here next example you who are my best friend who being the relative pronoun is used for you and with you we use should he who is my best friend should stand by me the verb will have to agree with the antecedent of the relative pronoun okay and with this dear students we come to the end of this chapter so i hope it is clear to us where to use the different verbs what 
verbs will be used with what kind of subjects. So, I am going to pause here and we will see you all soon in the next lecture. Thank you.